In this module, I want to show you how you can create columns. So on the screen, I've had blank document with the ruler active. Now, if the ruler is not active on your Word document, you go to view and you tick it on there where it says ruler, and then it will be on all the time. I'll come back to home. Now to insert a column, you need to go to the layout tab and there you have columns. You can select from one of these options or you can go down to more columns and select from one of these options where you can add more. I'm just going to cancel that off because I just want three columns, which is this option, three columns. Now on the ruler, you'll see the column markers and the first column that you're in where the cursor is also has the indent, left indent, right indent markers there. Now the way it works is this, you start typing. So if you type some text, as you type in, I'll just type some rubbish, you'll see how it works. It just wraps round in that column. If I do a few spaces as if these are words, you'll see how it works. So this just wraps round as if that's the whole document. Now when I come down, let's say I want to go into the second column or the third column, I can't actually physically click into that. I'm trying to double click. It's not letting me do that. I'm stuck in this first column. What you have to do is create a column break. So I'm still on the layout tab and then under breaks, you've got section breaks, but you've got column break. So if I click on that, my cursor now jumps across into the second column and I can type in that column, but not in the third column because I would have to do another break to get into the third column. So break, column, and then that gets my cursor into the third section or third column like so. Now I would automatically go into the second column if I came all the way down this column to the bottom, it would then wrap over into that one, all the way down to the bottom, it would wrap into that one. But if you don't want to go all the way down to the bottom, you have to do a column break. Now, when you finish with columns, so at the moment I've got columns on there. If I, in fact, if I come down on this line, I've come down below the, these bits of text. What you now need to do is insert another break, break continuous. Now, you see what happened there? Look, it sort of messed up the actual document a bit. So I'll just undo that and I'll come down on this last one and insert break continuous there. So that's jumped down a bit now. Still got the three columns on. So if I go now back up to columns and select one column, so I've taken it off on this line. So now when I type, it's just gonna go all the way across the screen like so. I'll just type it all the way across. It's no longer in columns like that. If I go back up into this, I'm doing, I'm still in the column. The columns appear on the ruler. So you can see it's doing the same sort of thing there, just wrapping around. I'll do a space like so. But down here, it is no longer in column format. And you can just type all the way across like so. Now to see the breaks, where the breaks sit in the document, you need to go to the view tab and click on draft. And then you can see column breaks and section breaks if there is a section break. That's the section break continuous. Those are the two column breaks to get into individual columns. If you start deleting these breaks off, you're then sort of trashing this document. I will do that actually. I'll delete that section break and then I'll de delete these column breaks. See what happens to the document when you go back into preview. So if I go back into print layout, everything is as a normal document because I've deleted all the column breaks and section breaks and that's how you do get rid of them. But beware of the consequences of doing that to your, the actual layout of your document. So that's basically how columns work and how you can get rid of columns. So hopefully that video is of use. Thank you for your time. I'll catch you in the next one.